Hey guys, how's it going? Greetings in the name of Jesus. How are y'all doing? Found something out, figured something out really cool. I was actually watching somebody else's video and it led me to this. And um, a lot of people have talked about this. This has actually been a big uh, topic of contention and disagreement in the Bible is how did Noah get all those animals on the ark? We have a very detailed description of what how big the ark was. Um, in fact, a guy in, was it Oklahoma, I think, built one. And uh, it's big, but you're like, there's no way he got all the animals of the world. Now, people have, on there, now people have come up with all kinds of theories. They said, oh, it only flooded just in that one region. Um, but funny enough, that flood is mentioned in, like, around the world in old cultures. <coughs> so, clearly there was something that went on here that was worldwide ca catastrophe. Because we have the archaeological proof to prove that it was there. I mean, there's people over in Montana that are digging up ocean fossils, shell fossils, and, and old seashells and stuff on top of mountains. Well, how'd they get there? Well, because there was a worldwide flood, that's why. And on and on and on. We just hear tons of arguments. We can go all day just on the arguments about this thing. And when we actually dig down into the scripture and what the scripture says, because people are like, there's no way he got all those species on that thing. There's just way too many. Well, true, there are. But there's a key word in the scriptures that tell us exactly how he was able to pull this off. And when we go and look at the scientific evidence, sorry, go look at the scientific evidence, we find that it was completely plausible and definitely possible. Now, as far as Noah's Ark goes, if you look at the description and you, you set it all up um, according to what that said and, and do it from a realistic standpoint, which the guy out there in Oklahoma, I think it's Oklahoma, uh, the Ark Adventure, or uh, Ark Encounter, which he did, you find that you can get a lot of animals on there. But what does it actually say? How do we actually prove this out? And this is a great way to prove this to anybody who doesn't believe it. Because most people don't believe this. Because this is the most well-known story. In Genesis 6, starting in verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I, whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast. And the creeping thing. And the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then it goes into the generations. So these are the generations of Noah. Noah was, just, was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And I'm going to skip over verse 10. It just talks about his kids. The earth also was corrupt before God, verse 11. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said, Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. That was to seal it. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it. So the story went all the way through the whole boat. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Listen to the wording here. This is verse 20. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come to thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all, of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God had commanded him. So he did. So, what, how do we, 
work this out. How did he get all of that on the boat? Because when you think about it, it's like, well, there's way too many animals. Well, we know how God works. We know God can take, he can take two zebras and all the species of the horse can be made, born out of those two zebras. That, that's, he, that's how he works, especially if they move and live in different regions. So all that needed to be was male and female of a genus or a, a kind of a certain type of animal. Now, let's look at what the numbers are, because the numbers are very telling about this. Because when you think about that, it's like, okay, so if two of cattle after their kind, a male and female, and most of them were probably very young, too, so they didn't take up a lot of room. If two of them went in there, all the, I mean, if you take all the species of a particular type and, and trace it back, it traces back to two individuals. Even humans, we trace back to two individuals. And they've been digging and digging and digging and trying to figure out why it only goes back to two. Um, let's see here. So, gen is generally accepted, and, and this number fluctuates depending on you know who you're talking to, but the total number of extant species is estimated to, to be between six and ten million potentially over 90 percent of the animal life forms on earth are insects insects may be found in nearly all environments although only a small number of species reside in the oceans now we know all the ocean creatures were good they didn't have to take them on there they're already in water so this one here this is from cal academy it says eight million seven hundred thousand species give or take 1.3 million so that fits the other number we were covering this is a new estimate uh, estimated total number of species on Earth. The most precise calculation ever offered with 6.5 million species found on land and 2.2 million dwelling in the ocean depths. Listen to this number. There are only 35 kinds of animal and most are really weird. Now, there's not just 35 kinds. I mean, you can link it back to that, but <clears throat> more realistically, there's between 35 and 200 kinds of animals. Um, I had that one number, but I don't know where it is now. Let's see. Oh, that's not it. So there's between 35 and 200 kinds. So you can take every species and trace it back. And you can link it back to two. And these two, all species came out of these two. And this is actually stuff you learn in grade school. We used to. So if there's only between 35 and 200 kinds, that's two. So you double that number. That's how many he would have to take in the ark. It's been estimated that the ark could have held like 50,000, uh, 30 to 50,000 animals. Theoretically, because a lot of them are really small. A lot of your bigger animals came from really small animals. So... A lot of people go, well, what about the insects? They, they can't all just buzz around. Some of them just crawl. Well, he had containers for that. If you have two of them, you only need a little bitty container to hold them in. How many kinds of insects are there in the world? At any time, it is estimated that there are some 10 quintillion individual insects alive in the United States. The number as to, of described species is approximately 91,000. So approximately only 91,000 species of insects. The undescribed species of insects in the United States, however, is estimated at some 73,000. So you see how quick that number dropped. And it got all the way down in undescribed species to 73,000. So how many actual insects were there? When you think about insects, you only need a little bitty container to hold two insects. So he could store on shelves in the ark gobs and gobs of these things with two insects of every kind in there. Very simple, very easy. And of the animals, when you trace it back to their kind, there's only between 35 and 200 kinds of animals. So God can very, very easily have the different species come out from that. Now, since we can prove this scientifically, that the, all the species we have today trace back to two individuals, every one of them, even the human being, it makes it very plausible that he put all those animals on the ark. Very plausible. Because even in the scripture, it says, of their kind, not, of, not species, of their kind. 
So it's really now this one here, Smithsonian says there's about 900,000 different kinds of insects. Now we don't know if they're talking about species or not, because let's see, it has long been recognized and documented that insects are the most diverse group of organisms, meaning that the number of species of insects are more than any other group in the world. Some 900,000 different kinds of living insects are known. So is he talking about 900,000 species or kinds? We don't know. Now, obviously there's no way you can get 900,000 little jars or containers that would take up half the boat or more, maybe most of the boat. But when you look at the other number, 73,000, you see how quick that number drops down as they start looking at the different types. Puts it, paints it in a much more picture. Now, did he have 73,000 little jars on there with insects in them? Probably not. Probably only had about 10 or less. And back then, you know, they had plenty of that stuff. There wasn't as many people as we have now. So it was easy for them to make little containers to carry those things and hold those things. And we know that through the, through the power of God, a lot of these animals, us, when you read the story, a sleep fell over them. So they were all relaxed and chill and just hanging out. And they didn't need very much room, just enough for them to hang out and get through the flood. So when you go read and do just a little bit of, ba I just did basic research, just a little bit of research, it's real easy to see that Edward, he had no problem getting two of every kind on the boat. If there was only 35 kinds of animals at that time, not species, but kinds, you double that number. So he only had to have 70 individual animals on the boat. Well, you look at the size of the ark, no problem. If it was 200, you only had to have 400. No problem. They said that there was no problem. They could have gotten 15 to 30,000 individual animals on that boat easily, judging by how the description on how it was to be built and looking at the floor space. If you ever get a chance, if you want to take a vacation, go check out the Ark Encounter and look at it. Because when you put it in perspective, because he built it to exactly the, what the Bible description was. When you put it in perspective, it's like, oh, yeah, there's no no problem getting all this in here. And they have all kinds of stuff on there, literature and little video presentations that, that show how all this stuff came to pass. It's really cool. So when somebody tells you, oh, there's no way, that's impossible. They're speaking from a secular standpoint. They're not looking at this from a research standpoint. They're taking what other people have told them. They're taking what the, tr the tradition of man has told them. Not really taking the time to go, you know what? I need to learn more about that and go and dig into it. <coughs> Consequently and ironically, we have the exact same problem now with grace through faith, with the rapture, with, um, let's pick a subject. People are arguing about every little thing. And when you listen to them or even get into a discussion with them, it comes from a place of no understanding. They're not doing enough research to dig into it to actually find. I have people tell me, ask me constantly in comment sections. Well, where'd you find that information? Google it. Googled it? Well, that's not an authority. Um, well, when you Google it, you'll find the authorities. It's really simple, really easy. All you got to do is just start looking through and see what's true and what's not true. It's real simple. People are lazy. They don't want to look this up. They want somebody to do it for them and tell them. I, I got an argument with a guy. I was like, well, go Google this. No, you need to give me links. No, I am not required to give you anything. Well, you made the claim. No, I did not make a claim. I stated a fact. You're the one that decided it was a claim. you got a problem with it and want to know if it's true, you go look it up. I will not hold your hand. You are not a child. I, right off the bat, I set people on, on their, set people back on their heels because I'm not going to hold your hand and walk you through this process. And the whole thing, like with the rapture, every, everybody asks the same thing. Oh, well, show me where it says that in the Bible. Dude, I'm going to send you five links and it's going to have um, 50 to 100 scriptures in each link that prove that the, the rapture is in the Bible. And most of it is going to show you it's pre-tribulation. Some of it's more generic description. But you're going to, not even going to look at the... I, I told one guy, you're not even going to look at the links. I'm going to share links with you like you asked. You're not going to look at them. And you're still going to come back with the same opinion and the same hate and slander that you're throwing on me in this comment section. It's a waste of my time. You know what the truth is. If you have a Bible, you're reading the same Bible I am. You know exactly what's in there. This applies to the story about Noah's Ark. People go off what man has told them, but don't. Is it hot out there? Go off of what man has told them, but don't take the time to go and dig into the research and look and see what the truth is. What, what people don't know, 
is right now, genealogists have taken man and traced man back. They want to see exactly where in, in the timeline in the past man comes from. They've traced man back, all men, all people back to Adam and Eve. Mitochondrial Adam and mitochondrial Eve. And what they discovered is there's one of two things we can find here. And there's a video on YouTube about it. And they're very, not very happy about what they found. But they said, when we look at certain information um, and put this, this type of stuff together, uh, mitochondrial Eve is about, you know, 20 or 30,000 years old, 40,000, I forget what the number is. But when we take these numbers into account, and these are the actually more accurate numbers when you listen to them, um, she's about 6,000 years old. And they're not very happy that they found this, but they openly admit, well, we're at a crossroads here because we found evidence that shows that man does come from two parents and the bloodline is only about 6,000 years old. And they can't explain why they came to that because they shouldn't have come to that answer. That's God. He's proving himself. He's proving where all this stuff came from and how all this stuff has come to be. And personally, I think it's funny. Because <laughs> everybody was so desperate to be right. And now God is proving them wrong. And we see more and more of that every day. People are like, well, Jesus never walked the earth. I got into this discussion. Go on YouTube or even online and Google or look up the different synagogues that have been found that date back to Jesus' time. And they have his name is literally in tile work in the floor and the walls. They got his name carved all over the place. And they're finding this constantly. So absolutely Jesus walked this earth. His name is out there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put his name in those things. So that's what we run into. That's the, the, the issues that we get into because people just refuse to believe in anything that doesn't make them feel comfortable. There's a movie coming out here pretty soon called The Hunt. This is actually, a, there's been several movies in the past called The Hunt. They're all about the same thing. It's people, elites hunting humans. This one, however, is supposedly liberals hunting deplorables. Um, there's a rumor going around that there may even be some Christians in there, and they're going to showcase them killing Christians. Um, guys, this is the sign of the times. We see the God is pulling his hand off the earth, and we see evil is fulfilling the void already. If we see that now, how much more time do we have here? Prepare your hearts. Be ready. If, if you've got stuff that you feel guilty about, talk to the Lord about it. Get it out. Repent of it. Turn away from it. Confess it to him. Get it off your chest. Keep reading your scriptures. There's a bunch of us on here, Grace Preachers. We're sharing the truth with you. Go and do your research on that so you see the same thing we see. We all got the same Bible. But unfortunately, some people have blinders on it. Don't see all the things that are in there. And, and get it figured out. And talk to him. That's the most important thing is talk to him. Talk to Jesus Christ. Let him know how you feel. And know that it is only what he did on the cross that saves us. It is grace through faith. Period. If people can add whatever they want to it, they can say, well, well, what? But this scripture says we must do this. This scripture says we must do that. Listen, if you release and relent to the spirit and let the Holy Spirit that is in you lead you, all these things happen by default. You automatically go into that. There's a, a change, a transition into that type of person. We try as Christians far too hard and to put too much effort into trying to be a Christian, when in reality, if we let go to the Spirit, if we just let Him have His way, He will swing us that way and direct us that path. It becomes automatic. But it's a process. You have to grow in these things. But today, right now, convince, be convinced and convince yourself it is grace through faith, because the Bible says it. Jesus is the atonement for your sins. Him and Him alone. No matter what you've done. And you got that, you got everything. Because you can't be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect. You can't be right. You can't be holy. You can't be righteous. All that stuff is filthy rags. It is only what Christ provided for us that makes us children of God. And through him, we are children of God. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you all in the next video.